Hey everyone, this is Paul, and uh, it's good to be back. I've uh, been away for a while. Uh, me and my uh, beautiful family, we went on a wonderful vacation for a couple of weeks. So I've been out of town, taking a break, and uh, we had an awesome time. Uh, but it's good to be back. And I don't know about you, but I've been really, uh, really appreciating and having a good time uh, watching and listening to Ryan's videos. And I just talked with Ryan the other day. Uh, he's doing well, and uh, he has a lot more to share. He's got a lot of really, really good things to share that will be coming up soon. So uh, make sure that you stay tuned for him. But uh, I've been wanting to do a video. Uh, there's been this, this certain topic that I'm gonna do the video on. has been on my heart for a while. And uh, the Lord has recently through some through my consideration, the Lord has helped me and uh, given me some more insights, some more light regarding this topic. And, uh, you know, as, as Ryan and I and Asher and others have mentioned, uh, one of the, you know, biggest and most obvious cult doctrines of Witness Lee in the local churches is to close your mind, is to get out of your mind and, you know, get into your spirit, uh, your so-called spirit. Uh, which is, a, you know, getting out of your mind, closing your mind. That's an obvious form of thought suppression and of mind control used by cults to manipulate and control people. And uh, I want to elaborate on this topic. It's a big one. It's a very important one because a lot of the rotten fruit, uh, one, of the, one of the rotten, main rotten fruits of Witness Lee's teachings is, uh, you know, oftentimes mental illness, which I know is a sensitive topic, but uh, mental illness is not uncommon in this group. And so uh, mental illness is one of the rotten fruits of Witness Lee's teachings. And if not mental illness, you know, not everybody has mental, mental illness in that group. But uh, if people don't have a mental illness, so to speak, then there's at least still a lot of uh, strange and uh, unusual behavior and decisions and actions from people in that group because of the teachings that they're under. And so I know that a lot of local church members will scoff at this claim, uh, but we need to look at what Witness Lee actually taught. Uh, yes, Witness Lee, I'm going to say it up front. Yes, Witness Lee actually taught his followers to be crazy. Not the good, enthusiastic kind of crazy. I'm talking about actually crazy. He taught his followers to be crazy, and I'm going to prove it by Witness Lee's own ridiculous statements. Okay, um, one of the phrases that we're going to talk about here in this video is how Witness Lee exhorted people, uh, especially the young people, to be crazy lovers of Jesus. This is a popular phrase in the local church's cult. Be a crazy lover of Jesus. Uh, and uh, let me just ask you real quick, especially when you're talking to young people, teenagers, college students, do you think that telling young people to be crazy, do you think that that could somehow go wrong? Uh, could that possibly go wrong in any way? <laughs> Of course, uh, and you know, of course, we know that there's two definitions of crazy. I'll cover that right now real quick because I know what the local churches are gonna argue about all these statements from Witness Lee. So real quick, two definitions of crazy. The first one, this is according to Miriam Webster. Let me just read it for you. The first definition that we usually think of when you say the word crazy is not mentally sound, marked by thought or actions that lack reason. Okay, pretty simple, right? Also defined as impractical and unusual in Merriam-Webster's as well. Now, I realize that the word crazy could also mean uh, someone's having a strong desire or being passionate or extremely enthusiastic, right? So that's the second definition. And of course, Witness Lee and his followers will always tell you, oh, whenever we use the word or, or the phrase crazy, be a crazy lover of Jesus, for example. We mean being really enthusiastic. We're not talking about 
being mentally deranged. No, no, no. Uh, but what I'm going to prove to you is that Witness Lee's own statements clearly show that the kind of crazy that he was promoting and exhorting the young people to be was the first definition, the actual crazy. He was actually promoting mental derangement, to be mentally deranged, mentally unsound, to lack reason, to be irrational. So that is what he actually truly taught. The man actually taught people to be crazy, irresponsible, to throw out logic. And is it any wonder why there's plenty of mental illness in that group? depression and all kinds of strange uh, mental psychological conditions in that group? Is it any wonder? No wonder. Witness Lee taught them to be that way. And I'm going to prove it right here. These are some quotes that I'm going to read you from a book from Witness Lee called The Living and Practical Way to Enjoy Christ, specifically chapter three, which is entitled Crazy Lovers of Jesus. And uh, I'll make comments here and there as I go through the quotes. So I'm telling you, buckle up. If you're not used to this or if you've forgotten about this, man, you need to buckle up. Because we're about to go on a wild, crazy ride. Literally, crazy ride. And I'm sorry to say, as I read these quotes, it's going to get worse uh, as we go along. So be patient. Sit tight and marvel, marvel at the insanity that you're about to hear, that this guy spoke, okay? And I want to say again, this is Witness Lee speaking now. I'm quoting Witness Lee from chapter three, Crazy Lovers of Jesus. Witness Lee says, I want to say again that you need to forget about outward correction, outward improvement, and outward activity. Do not try to serve the Lord. Work for him or do anything for him. End quote. Now, just beware, this is just a general statement here, beware of anyone who says that you don't have to do anything for the Lord. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Uh, Lee says here that you should also forget. Forget what? See the thought suppression? Forget. Forget what, Witness Lee? Forget all outward correction. Forget outward improvement. Forget outward activity. Forget it all. So forget improving yourself. Forget your outward activities. Uh, forget your outward, um, forget any outward correction. If you're wrong, forget the outward correction. Does that sound rational to you? Does that sound like it's lacking reason to forget any kind of improvement of yourself? That sure doesn't sound rational to me. Witness Lee goes on, and I quote, do not pay attention to outward activities, but always return to the spirit, lowercase s spirit like your human spirit. From within your spirit, you have to tell the Lord. You have to tell the Lord a thousand times a day. You have to tell the Lord a thousand times a day. Lord Jesus, I love you. End quote. So there's the extreme repetition and chanting uh, that is uh, typical of cults here. So instead of doing God's will and uh, serving him and obeying his commands, Lee suggests rather to forget all that outward, outward stuff and instead chant a thousand times a day the same phrase. Uh, you know, this major rep repetitive chanting, man, this is, uh, this is characteristic of, this is typical mind control tactics, thought suppression and mind control tactics right here in your face. Witness Lee says, don't pay attention to what you should do. Just chant a phrase a thousand times a day. Uh, does that sound rational to you? Does that sound like it's lacking reason? Uh, you bet. That's crazy to forget any improvement, any correction, any outward activities, and just chant something a thousand times a day, that is crazy. Witness Lee goes on. Oh, he's, he's far from finished. He goes on. You should forget about all other things, says Witness Lee. If you have a bad temper, forget about it. 
If you cannot love others, forget about that. You cannot serve or function, forget about that. I simply say, oh Lord Jesus, I love you. I just love you. You are so sweet to me. Try to say this 100 times tomorrow and then come to the meeting and see what will come out, end quote. So in other words, Lee says, you have sins, you have problems, forget about it. Uh, I thought Witness Lee was Chinese. I didn't know he was Italian. He just wants to say, hey, hey, forget about it. Forget about it? Forget about your sins and your problems? And instead, just say something? Now he's reduced the chanting to a hundred times instead of a thousand. Maybe he's kind of correcting himself now. Maybe he realizes how stupid that was and he's reduced it to a hundred times. So now he says, instead of... Uh, trying to correct your, uh, get correction or improve yourself, chant this phrase a hundred times a day. Forget about your sins. Forget about your issues. Forget about it. Repeat phrases over and over and over again. Is this lacking reason? Is this unsound? Yes, that's crazy. Then Witnessly says this. We need to say... Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. I just love you. You are so sweet. Reveal yourself to me. Show me your beauty. Capture me, Lord, with your beauty. I want to be crazy. Yes, Witness Lee says to pray, I want to be crazy by being wrecked with your beauty. Then he says, then you will see what will come out in the meeting. You will be the first one, even the best one, to function in the meeting. End quote. So Lee tells people to pray, Lord, I want to be crazy. Can you say crazy? And according to Lee, praying that you want to be crazy will somehow make you the first and best one in the church meeting. Now, does that sound rational? Does that sound, is that sound reason? No, that is crazy. Now more craziness from Witness Lee. He's not finished. You must be aware that the enemy, oh, the subtle one, will beguile you by tempting you, uh-oh, tempting you to what, Witness Lee? To serve the Lord. Oh, that's so terrible, isn't it? So he will tempt you to serve the Lord. You may say that you are learning how to serve the Lord, but the Lord does not need you to serve him. The Lord needs you to love him, end quote. So here in typical fashion, in typical cult fashion, Witness Lee is pitting certain commands of God against other commands of God. He is divorcing loving God with serving God. He's divorcing the two things. Saying God doesn't need you to serve him. He just wants you to love him. When actually the two go hand in hand. Just like the fear of God and loving God go hand in hand. They're not, they're not separate. They're not, uh, you can't separate them. So that's typical cult teaching and obfuscation. So Witness Lee goes on. He says, Satan, the subtle one, would come in to beguile you by tempting you to serve the Lord. Today in this generation, the Lord Jesus does not need a, a lot of young people to work for him. No. He needs many young ones to love him desperately. If you love him for just half a day, you will be crazy. Today, the Lord Jesus needs many crazy lovers. Today's generation is a generation of pleasure lovers. People today love all kinds of entertainment, amusement, and worldly enjoyment. We are not like this. We are the crazy lovers of Jesus. We do not care for entertainment, amusement, or worldly entertainment. We are not for any kind of sport. Our sport is Jesus. Jesus is our, all our entertainment to us. Are you really crazy to such an extent? End quote. So, did you hear that? Lee says, if you love the Lord for just half a day, you will be crazy. And that Jesus will be your sport and your entertainment. Wow, I didn't realize that Jesus came here 
and died on the cross and rose from the dead so he could be my sport and my entertainment. It's great. He's like my sports star and my uh, court jester all at the same time. That's the Jesus that Witness Lee is presenting here. Uh, do, I, I didn't know that Jesus was our sport and our, our entertainment. Did you? Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Crazy. Witness Lee goes on. Do not think that you need more teachings from the Bible. Do not think that you need some training about how to serve the Lord, how to preach the gospel, how to work for the Lord. I am desperate to cause you all to be crazy lovers of Jesus. I have no burden to give you some new doctrine, some new message. I am burdened to make you all the crazy lovers of Jesus. I care for only one thing, that you have to love Jesus in a crazy way, end quote. So remember, Witness Lee is very burdened. What is he burdened for? To give you teachings from the Bible? No, he said it himself. He's not burdened to give you teachings from the Bible. And guess what? He's not giving you teachings from the Bible. He's telling you that you need to be crazy, mentally deranged, mentally unsound, lacking reason, irrational, irresponsible. He is telling you that to your face. And it's about to get worse. Look at what he says here. He says, every lover is a crazy one. If you are sober in your mind to love someone, if you are sober in your mind to love someone, your love must be false. End quote. So here Lee, Lee demonizes sobriety, which the Bible promotes, just like he demonizes natural affection. He demonizes sobriety. The Bible exhorts, especially young men, to be sober-minded. Here Lee says, if your love is sober-minded, then it's a false love. And that only true love is, is kind of crazy and irrational and wild. But uh, the, Lee, the, the, the love that Witness Lee is teaching is not the love of the Bible. It's not a sober love. It's an irrational, mentally unsound, deranged love that is crazy. Now it gets worse. Listen to what this cult leader tells his followers to their faces. He says, we have a proverb that says love blinds. In a sense, I have a burden to blind you, not to make you so clear. Do not try to be clear. You have to lose your sight. When Jesus catches you, you become blind to everything except him. Today, this generation does not need a lot of clear young people. It needs a lot of crazy lovers of Jesus, end quote. I'm telling you, you cannot make this stuff up. The cult leader is telling people to their face that they need to be crazy, that they need to be blind, and that he does not want them to be clear. Of course, he doesn't want them to be clear. Of course, he wants them to be blind. That way, he can control people, take their money, and uh, steal them away from Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to create his own little cult kingdom. Of course he wants people to be blind. Of, co of course he doesn't want them to be clear. These are his words. These are the words of Witness Lee to say he wants you to be crazy, blind, and not clear. This is not my, this is not my uh, speaking. I'm not making this up. It's right there. Look it up on Living Stream Ministries content. Then, he, then Witness Lee says, then you will forget everything. You will be fully possessed by Christ. False Christ. Then he says, you should be crazy to such an extent that you do not even have the consciousness that you are crazy. You are crazy without a sense of being crazy. But you have the full sense of Christ. Now Lee is promoting being crazy to such an extent that you have no self-consciousness and you don't care about anything regarding what other people may think of you. You have no self-consciousness to the point where you're suppressing your thoughts and your feelings. It's another way of thought suppression and blocking out your thoughts and feelings. That's what Witness Lee wants. Then Witness Lee says, and I quote, if you are the Lord's crazy lovers, your whole being from within will be fully occupied 
by Jesus. Your feeling, listen to this. He says your feeling, your will, your decision, your intention, your motive, your intent, and everything within you will be fully taken over by Jesus. I do not want to pass on more and more teachings and doctrines to you. I want to make you blind, to make you crazy lovers of Jesus, end quote. So according to Lee, to be crazy means that your will, your decisions, your intentions, even everything within you is to the point where you do not have control over your faculties, but rather Jesus does. Because Witness Lee said, they're all taken over. Taken over. Let me just clue you in on something. If you don't know already, the Lord God does not violate people's free will. He does not use them as puppets and control them and take over their mind, their emotions, their intentions, their motives. No, he does not do that. But the devil does want to violate people. The devil does want to take over people's faculties and possess and control them like puppets. And that is the Jesus that Witnessly promotes, a false Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible. So Lee is promoting being in a condition where you do not have full control over your faculties, but this supposed Jesus does. It's his false Jesus that he's teaching. That is crazy. And it's no wonder that people in this group lack self-control. No wonder. Then the icing on the cake. Witness Lee says, do not care for your living, your destiny, or your future. Your destiny is to love Jesus, to be crazy for Jesus. The grand finale of Lee's chapter of promoting being mentally unsound, mentally deranged, irresponsible, irresponsible, and lacking reason, being irrational. The grand finale is that he is promoting to not care for your living, your way of life, and don't care for your destiny, don't care for your future. In other words, give it up. Just like you give up your mind, give all that up too. Don't care for your living, don't care for your destiny, don't care for your future. And he's telling this to young people. This is insanity. It is not just irresponsible and presumptuous to tell young people this, but it is evil and it is promoting actual mentally deranged uh, living, mentally unsound living, mentally unsound decisions and actions. He is promoting actual craziness. Okay. Lee says your destiny is to be crazy for Jesus, to be a crazy lover of Jesus. And then he says this, of course, at the very end, every city, every state, and every country needs a bunch of crazy young lovers of Jesus. Oh, we got to get those young people, don't you? You got to take advantage of those impressionable young people, don't you, cult leader? Sick. Then he says, if you all are such lovers the numbers of attendance in your meetings will always be increasing. Yeah, that's what he really wants. It's all about the numbers, isn't it? Numbers, money, attendance. That's what it's all about to some people, isn't it? Then he says, you all need to be the crazy lovers of Jesus. This is what today's generation needs. So let's have a quick recap, okay? <clears throat> a quick recap of what Witness Lee taught you to do in this chapter, what he taught young people, high school students, college people, college students to do. Just a, just a quick recap of what Witness Lee taught people to do. And you tell me if this is mentally unsound, mentally deranged, irrational, lacking reason. He taught us the following in chapter three, forget about all correction, forget about all outward improvement, Forget about improving yourself in any way. He said, instead, say a phrase over and over and over again, a thousand times a day. Instead of trying to improve, repeat a phrase a thousand times a day. Forget about all other things. Forget about your problems. Forget about your sins and repeat, repeat a phrase now just a hundred times a day. 
Is that mentally sound? Sounds mentally deranged. Sounds delusional. Irrational. Then he says, pray that you want to be crazy. Yes, Witness Lee taught his followers to pray to be crazy. And that this will make you the first and best in the church meeting. Does that make any sense to you? Then he said, Jesus is your sport. Jesus is your entertainment. Loving him for just half a day will make you crazy. Lee does not want to give you teachings from the Bible, but rather wants to make you crazy. And he says, if you are sober in your mind when you love, then your love is false. Does that make any sense? Is that rational? Then he says, uh, he wants you to be blind and not clear. Is that mentally sound? No, that's mentally deranged. To want people to be blind and unclear. Then he says that he wants you to be so crazy that you have no self-consciousness of it. And that he wants Jesus to take over your will, your decisions, everything within you so that you have no control over your faculties anymore. That's crazy. And then he says, do not care for your way of life, for your living or your future. Instead, be a crazy lover of Jesus. That's what he wants you to be crazy. So all of these points are mentally unsound, mentally deranged, lacking reason. In other words, Witness Lee actually taught people to be crazy. And I'll make some further points in a quick upcoming video.